to whom shall we go? The sixth chapter of the Gospel of John is instrumental in understanding the Gospel according to John and its witness to Jesus. Within the sixth chapter, there are many ways in which Jesus is seen as both Messiah and as a miracle worker. First, the miracle worker. In John 6, there is a great crowd that follows Jesus. They're even called disciples. 5,000 of them were men plus women and children. They were listening to Jesus teach. And as it came time for, for a meal to be shared, the only food available were two small fish and five loaves of bread offered by a child to Jesus. Jesus feeds the 5,000, and it is such an amazing sight, a miracle, that the crowd wants to make Jesus their king. Jesus, sensing what they are desiring to do, goes away on a mountain to reaffirm his identity as, as the Messiah. Coming down from the mountain, it is, it is evening, and a storm is brewing on the Sea of Galilee where the disciples have their boat. And as they are out in the storm, John tells us that Jesus comes walking on the water to them. Now, you can read it one way in which Jesus is walking on the little water, but you can also read it another way where Jesus is walking on the stormy water of the crowds desiring to make him their king. It was a temptation Jesus would have to face and overcome the desire of the crowd to control his identity. Jesus knew his identity. He spoke of that identity to the crowd after he had gone up on the mountain, after he walked out to his disciples on the sea. And that identity is found only in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. And that is where Jesus calls himself the bread of life. There are three times in the Gospel of John and the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John is the only time where Jesus is referred to as the bread of life. As he talks to his disciples and as he talks to the crowd that is gathered around him, he shares these words today from the sixth chapter of John, verses 56 through 69. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. This he said in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Many of his disciples, when they heard it, said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples take offense at but Jesus in himself, knowing that his disciples murmured at it, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who those were that did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless he is granted to him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer went about with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. As the crowd heard Jesus teach about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, they decided that this was much too hard to understand, to comprehend what Jesus was talking about. And so the crowd that only the day before wanted to make Jesus a king now started deserting him, murmuring like the children of Israel who were in the wilderness the ones who depended on manna. Jesus, earlier in John's gospel, 
has talked about how he is the man that come down from heaven. Well, as we hear and remember what Jesus' identity is, you might remember that I said that only the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John and three times in the Gospel in the sixth chapter is Jesus referred to as the bread of life. And that's why he says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live. Jesus wanted his identity to be understood. Now, of course, the Gospel of John was not written in the time of Jesus, but it's written as a witness to Jesus and to his identity as the Messiah, the Son of God. As Jesus is witnessing in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, we see that there is also written in the Gospel of John what is called the prologue to John. John, the first chapter, the first 18 verses. The prologue to John begins this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. When Jesus invited the disciples, commanded, actually, that they shed his flesh and drink his blood in order to have life eternal, he was teaching, the Gospel of John was teaching, that when Jesus talked about eating the flesh, it meant that we would ingest, consume his word in our lives. Well, as I mentioned, the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, is essential in understanding the identity of Jesus. A part of that identity is found in today's scripture reading. As the crowd is leaving and Jesus finds himself going from 5,000 to 12, Jesus asks his disciples, do you also wish to go away? Now, it might seem like Jesus was giving them permission to go away, but really what Jesus was doing was reissuing the call to follow. He was not inviting the disciples to go away. He was inviting the disciples to live in a deeper understanding of who he was as they ate his flesh and drank his blood as his identity to find their identity as followers of how he is the bread of life sustain them with words of life for the eternal. And that's why Peter said, in response to Jesus' questions, do you also wish to go away? Why Peter said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Peter was confessing that for which he was born to confess, for which all of us are born to confess, that Jesus is the bread of life. And that as we can consume his flesh, as we, as we ingest his word, we are able to follow him because we know who he is. Jesus asked his disciples, do you wish also to go away? And Peter said, to whom shall we go? That's still the answer. The answer when we're facing difficult times in our lives challenging times. To whom shall we go? We go to the bread of life who gives us life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Well, God, we give thanks to you for the gift of life this day, for Jesus, our Savior, who calls us to follow Grant, O oh God, that we might know that Jesus is the one whom we are called to follow this day. Amen. Dear friends, may God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you as you follow Jesus this day. Amen.